Hi, this is Browns beat writer Nate Ulrich alongside columnist Marla Reidenauer. We're here at First Energy Stadium where the Browns fell 26-23 to the Denver Broncos in overtime. We're going to go over highs and lows real quick. Marla, I guess we'll start off on a positive note. What's a high for you in this game? Well, I've got to go with my secret weapon, who's not a secret weapon anymore, Gary Barnage. Two more touchdowns. Um, the guy's on an incredible roll in a contract year, and whew, it looks like he's going to cash in. Yeah, I'll go with uh, lows to start out uh, on my end, and I'm going to go with the coaching decisions. There was a couple that I thought, um, you know, Mike Pettin maybe had a hard time making, kind of the way he explained them after the game. The first one was actually really early. It's weird to think of this in an overtime game, but the first possession that the Browns had, um, they went for it on fourth and five from the Broncos 32. Travis Coons entered this game 11 of 11 on field goals, and it would have been a 50-yard field goal, which is pretty, you know, it's long, but it's pretty standard in the NFL. But the Browns decided to go for it instead. They did not end up converting. Um, and I just thought it was interesting because you got a kicker who hasn't let you down yet. 50 yards, like I said, isn't, you know, out of the ordinary. And Mike, you know, I asked Mike Pettin about it, and he said if we had gotten to the 30, we would feel comfortable based on the end that we were kicking at and what special teams coordinator Chris Tabor observed in pregame warm-ups. So, you know, they got to the 32, so they're six feet away from changing their minds there. And, in a game that goes to overtime and you lose in heartbreaking fashion, you think about every wasted opportunity to score points. And another one was after Carlos Dansby returned the interception 35 yards for a touchdown with 8.07 left in regulation. The Browns were ahead by four, and they went for two, which was an interesting choice because Mike Pettin viewed it as an opportunity to go ahead by six, and if, if you convert there, two field goals don't beat you, they tie. But... You know, I, I think with that much time left on the clock, a, a lot of people, and I'm, I think I look at it this way, argue, take the point. And, you know, take it when you can get it. With that much time left, there's so much that's going to happen throughout the course of the game. And, and obviously, you know, if, if they had that point, Travis Coons is kicking a field goal there at the end to go head by one instead of tie it. Um, Marlo, how about you uh, in terms of your low? What are you going with? I'm going to have to go with Josh McCown just coming off the game of his life last week in Baltimore in that victory, had an average game, rating in the 60s. I mean, he's just like the poster child for their inconsistency, and it can, it's not really showing the young Browns how to be a pro when you're as, you're as wild and erratic as the rest of them. Yeah, he certainly came crashing back down to earth after some really good performances. He's he's a reigning AFC Offense Player of the Week, but the Broncos' number one defense, um, you know, really gave him problems to say the least. Um, I'm going to go with the high. Uh, why not? I already went with the low. Carlos Dansby, I mentioned him earlier, uh, two interceptions, uh, one pick six, uh, just a phenomenal game. The the pick six, like I said, put the Browns ahead. Um, too bad that they couldn't, you know, capitalize on it and, and finish the game the way they would, would have liked. And along that note, you know, another linebacker, Barkevius Mingo, with an interception overtime that gave the Browns possession at the Broncos' 39-yard line. Right there, I mean, you have an opportunity. Nine yards, based on what Mike Pettin said about where they would feel comfortable at that end of the stadium on the east end, getting – Travis Coons in a field goal range. Nine yards would have would have made the Browns comfortable, and they went backward instead. Uh, Robert Turbin lost three yards when he bobbled a, a, a toss from Josh McCown, and then McCown took two sacks in a row. The Broncos, as we all know, responded with the, the game-winning uh, field goal drive. So uh, that, that that is my high, uh, the interceptions by Carlos Dansby and, and Barkevius Mingo. But, again, the Browns uh, squandered squandered those uh those takeaways um well hey thanks for watching maybe the browns will finish next time two out of three uh games uh, their past three games have been have been down to the wire and they've lost two of those three um we'll keep you updated no matter how it turns out on ohio.com thanks for watching